Hi, this is Rachel and welcome to RoomTube, the period channel. I cannot believe I'm having to write this update, but with laws having changed in Poland and potentially the US over abortion, it is super important to make sure that anyone using a period app to track their period makes sure that they are safe to do so. It's such a shame, but gone are the days when something so benign as tracking your period and getting to know your body could end up with serious legal consequences. But here we are. In a previous post back in 2016, I mentioned that when considering whether to use an app versus paper, you needed to consider the following. One, inaccurate cover lines. Some apps have inaccurate cover lines, meaning that fertility and infertility that the app provides are not always accurate. Actually, since I've written that, a few apps have stopped adding the cover line in and require the user to add them in themselves because they don't want the liability. Next up, method and logic for calculating fertile days. This may not be a recognized method or it may not be consistent with whatever symptothermal method you learnt or are using. And it's super important to make sure that you are consistent between your app and whatever you're charting and the actual rules that you are following. Ovulation predictors may tell you when you are due to ovulate, which can be either using some maths based on your previous cycles or based on your cervical fluid input or maybe even a mix of the two. However, most of them do not share the basis that they do this on, and people assume that if they're due to ovulate, that they did actually ovulate without actually checking. And you need to be aware that your body can prepare for ovulation and not actually ovulate if you're stressed, which is why temperature charting is super important. The final note I made on that blog post, and this is an incredibly summarized version of that blog post, is that data protection in countries with private health insurance can be an issue. Because if, say, for example, your insurance company becomes aware that you may be needing to increase charges to them for antenatal care, birth care, and adding a new human onto that, and it's clear that you're trying for a baby, and they have that data, they could push up your premiums. Now, I don't know any specific cases where that's happened. I just want to put out that it's a possibility. So your data could be used to convict you for having a legal abortion if you miss a period or miscarry. And I, I can't believe I'm writing this. So let's take a look at the relevant changes in abortion laws. So I don't want to cause a massive panic, but just looking over the last few years in some countries such as Poland, which has enforced a near total abortion ban that resulted in a woman losing her life to sepsis 22 weeks into a pregnancy because doctors were too afraid to operate and risk criminal charges. Or the case in Ireland where a woman died after being denied an abortion after her baby died because an abortion can be given after the baby has died to help evacuate the baby from the body. Otherwise, it can turn septic inside the body. It's really important, actually, to think of an abortion as an eviction rather than the killing of a fetus or an embryo or a baby. In El Salvador, it's really quite interesting that abortions are completely illegal, including those which save the mother's lives. And I find it very curious that women from poorer socioeconomic backgrounds end up in prison for abortions, and yet those who are from more privileged backgrounds seem to do much better. It's almost like medical privacy doesn't exist for them. Which leads me on to apps. As I write this, it's been leaked that the US Supreme Court has voted to overturn Roe v. Wade, which could result in abortion being completely illegal in the US. There are some US states already, such as Texas, where, let's call them whistleblowers, are encouraged to report on and sue women and other pregnant people who they suspect of having abortions, trying to access abortions, going to other states for abortions. But 
it looks like the whole country, excuse me, the whole country is at risk of some very serious consequences. What makes it worse is that this law isn't informed by science, as in Ohio, where there is a requirement on doctors to move an ectopic pregnancy to a viable location. If you don't know what this means, an ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy that happens outside the womb or uterus. The most common place is the fallopian tube, but there are cases where it has attached almost anywhere in the pelvic or abdominal cavity. Usually this is not a viable pregnancy and it becomes life-threatening for the mother when it ruptures as it causes sepsis, a blood infection that is very serious. And this is the most common complication you see with meningitis because it leads to gangrene and amputation. Usually the fetus and the surrounding area, often the fallopian tube, are removed to save the life of the mother. However, in some states they want a magical procedure that is not currently medically possible, which is to reimplant the embryo into the correct place. I can only imagine how doctors would feel if they could actually do this, but it's not possible. Lawmakers should not be able to make up laws that are impossible to achieve, but that is a whole other issue. But what has this got to do with your period tracking app? I hear you ask. We're getting there, I promise. Okay, so assume you're in a country where getting an abortion or even miscarrying can land you into legal trouble. That does happen in some countries as well. If someone were to sell your data to the government or an agency working for the government or that works with the government that can see your data from your tracking app, that could have serious consequences for you that you haven't thought of yet. For example, you may be tracking your period and stop for whatever reason. Maybe you're busy, maybe you're tired, maybe your thermometer stopped working. Maybe you you were just done with charting for a while or it's too much um, in your headspace or maybe you're stressed from a fertility journey. There are many reasons why people take a gap from charting and that's fine. And then you decide to continue. This gap might be used as evidence that you had a pregnancy and potentially aborted it. I really hope that this is an extreme example and that it would never happen, but we are covering our worst case theoretical basis here. So I really want to make sure people are safe. What if you do get pregnant and have a miscarriage? Could the data on your app be used by your government or their proxies to condemn you or charge you with criminal offences, even if it was a wanted pregnancy? And what if you have PCOS, fertility issues, or are entering perimenopause and have irregular long cycles? Will someone mistake that for you having an abortion? So there was a tweet from Elizabeth C. McLaughlin. I'm not sure if I said her name right. Apologies if I haven't. Um claiming that there is a history of the CDC buying data from marginalised communities and that this is a very real possibility for those in the US. I'm going to read out the app on my blog post. There's a picture of it. I have dyslexia. I am going to apologise now for any crazy (laughs) reading that I do. So her first tweet on the 3rd of May 2022 at 1.33pm that I want to read out is... If you're using an online period tracker or tracking your cycles through your phone, get it off and delete your data now. In the comments, she has put, let me make something very clear to everyone in the retweets wondering why. Peter Thiel has already sold data tracking to locations of marginalised people in the government. And then, this shows how great I am at Twitter, or not great, it's either a retweet or she's somehow... appended it on to that comment um, from Tim Marchman on the 3rd of May. New CDC brought location data tracking tens of millions of people from a Peter Thiel backed spy firm. Use cases including hourly monitoring of activity in curfew zones, activity in schools and houses of worship and monitoring of the Navajo Nation. And then there is a link to a Vice article. She's followed this up with another reply to herself in her comments. If you think that your data showing when you last menstruated isn't of interest to those 
who are about to outlaw abortion, few or few, do I have a wake up call for you? Now, I'm just going to say I don't know her sources and I don't know if that's true. It's just something to consider. So what should you do and what are the considerations you need to pay attention to? Number one, check out if you're in a country where miscarrying or abortion could be or is illegal and keep checking on this regularly, even if you do not follow any other news. I really also want you to take just a few deep breaths because despite all this, you may be looking at something that may affect you or might not and panicking is not going to help. So just keep an eye on the news and keep yourself updated and informed. The next thing is to do some research on the app that you are using. If you haven't already, you need to check out your app's privacy settings, whether they sell their data and to who they can sell it. Keep in mind, if something is free, you are the product. Even if your app promises to keep your data safe for now, uh, or you're thinking you may be protected by GDPR rules, you may want to check where the company is based, as in all honesty, a lot of companies outside the EU don't believe that GDPR applies to them. I'm always shocked when I hear people say this, but... um, there it is. (laughs) You do need to keep checking that your app hasn't sold any data and over the years I have been approached in case I want to do any data mining myself which I always decline despite having been a professional data nerd at one point. If your app is sharing your data then you can download that data, delete the app, um, delete it from the app first and then delete that app from all your devices and if you can delete it from your account before deleting your account. Also see if the app or the company that owns the data within that app will remove your data from their database by contacting them directly. And then finally, the next thing you can do is move on to paper charting. As with my previous video, I had a link to my course which goes through how to chart using the symptothermal method, which is very low priced compared to my peers. However, if money is an issue for you there are free resources so I've linked to the free resources from the organization that trained me the NFPTA and also their sister organization Ireland which has a chart which has Fahrenheit in it as well so there are resources there for you again I am shocked and appalled that I'm even having to do this post and this update whatever you do keep informed don't panic, stay safe, and if you can advocate or inform people of what's going on and how it could impact people, please do share and make sure that other people are informed as well. Take care, everybody.